I'm Michael Rubino, indoor air quality expert. And today we're gonna to talk about something very important. If you think one test can tell you everything you need to know about your home's air quality, think again. Agar plates, air testing, swabs, the dust test. There are so many ways to test for your home's air quality. But here's the truth. No single test tells the full story. Mold testing is one of the most misunderstood parts of indoor air quality. You might think, I'll just do this one test to know if I have a problem inside my home. But unfortunately, that's just not how it works. Every test has its own strengths and its own big limitations. Agar plates, also known as Petri dishes, they're one of the most popular DIY mold tests. You leave them out for a few hours, and if they grow mold, you assume that the air is contaminated. But here are the limitations. Number one, it only detects spores that land on the agar plate. It's not going to identify hidden mold behind walls, in attics, or even HVAC systems. Some of these slow growing molds, like stacky botches for instance, that typically takes three to five days, they're not going to show up. And there's absolutely no way to measure actual air concentration. And last, but certainly not least, the further away you are from the source, the more it looks like everything is fine. In fact, I've seen agar plates show that everything is fine in the same room where we found major issues. So one of the biggest problems with this test is that just because nothing grows on it, doesn't mean that there's not a problem. That can give you a false sense of security. And honestly, you would need so many of these plates just to test one room to appropriately triangulate any potential problems there are in that one room. My final verdict, do you wanna use these Petri tests? Use them for curiosity, but don't make the determination that the air is clean if nothing's growing on it. Air testing is one of the most common methods professionals use. It captures airborne mold spores inside a small canister, and then it gets sent into a lab for analysis, where under a microscope, someone is physically counting how many spores are inside that slide. But here's the thing, it only captures a snapshot in time. Mold spores settle quickly, so you might miss them during that air test. It does not detect mold spores growing behind walls or inside surfaces, unless you test really close to where that area is. Meaning, the further away that you test from the problem, the more normal things look. You know one of the biggest issues with this technology? Mold spores aren't always just floating in the air waiting to be captured. They're settled in our dust. So the problem here is if you test in the wrong place at the wrong time, you can get a false negative, even in a home with serious contamination issues. I've seen it far too many times. So air tests, they're not a great screening tool. They do not tell you the average exposure in a room or in a home. And they should always be combined with other methods of inspection and testing. Swab testing. Well, it's great for services, not for air. Swab tests are meant to actually collect a surface sample. So you're looking at testing visible problems and analyzing if those visible problems are mold, or maybe what type of mold. And they're great for that purpose. In an attic space, if you find mold all over the joist and you wanted to test that to see what type of mold it is, and if you should invest in remediation of that attic space, that's a perfect use case for this type of technology. But here are the limitations. It only tests the exact spot that you're swabbing. It does not tell you how widespread the problem is. You have to combine that analysis with a visual inspection. And sometimes you can't even do that because what the surface of what you're testing is just the tip of the iceberg and the rest of it's behind the wall or behind the surface. So you have no idea how far widespread the problem is. So it takes a good inspector and a good remediator to take that data and develop a plan trying to account for some of the variables. And for obvious reasons, the swab test does not measure the air, does not tell us airborne exposure. So if you already see mold 
it can confirm the presence of what it is and how much is there from a quantification standpoint on the swab itself. But it's not gonna tell you how much that's producing or how much is in the air. It can't tell you if the problem is worse than you think. So yeah, swab testing is useful. I love to see that data in a home when I'm trying to develop a project and a plan to help improve someone's air quality. It's just important that you understand the limitations of it. Now we have the dust test, the hidden truth about your home's air. Now this is where things get interesting. The dust test works by analyzing the settled dust across your home. Dust collects over time, right? This gives us a history of exposure. It can detect hidden sources of contamination, even when air tests miss this. It can identify specific toxic species that typically aren't always airborne. Mold spores, they don't just disappear. They settle in your dust. They become part of your dust. And if you've ever sat near a window on a sunny day and you saw the ray of light refract off your dust, you know that your dust is everywhere and you are breathing that in. So whatever's in your dust, you are being exposed to. So this is an important metric to look at. This is one of the best tools from a screening perspective to really analyze what's going on inside your home. Now, what are the limitations? Of course, I already mentioned this, every test has their limitations. This cannot tell you exactly where the problem is, just that you have a problem, which is why you're gonna need to combine this data and then move forward and get other testing to help you triangulate what was found on this data. This could be your entry point where other testing technologies and other inspection technologies can help build upon giving you a sense of where these problems are actually located. So what's the best way to test for mold? Here's the answer. You can't just rely on one test. DIY mold tests can be helpful if you're just curious or wanna check a specific area, but they won't give you the full picture of what's going on in your home. If you really want answers, start with the dust test. It looks at the whole environment to show you what you're breathing in every single day. Next, bring in a certified mold inspector. They'll pinpoint exactly where the problems are and create a plan for your remediation team. From there, a team like Home Cleanse can step in to remove the contamination and restore your air quality so that your home supports your health, not hurts it.